Hi friends, welcome to Nyana Learning. So here I am presenting a new lecture that is VHDL. So VHDL that is very high speed integrated circuit that is VHSIC hardware description language HDL uh, which combines VHDL okay VHSIC and HDL combines VHDL actually VHDL is not a basic subject it is an advanced subject so the entire subject will be covered in five or six lectures so this is the first lecture that is an introductory lecture so this lecture includes an introduction to VHDL then its features basic terminology is used in VHDL levels of system abstraction and the design units okay so VHDL that is very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language it describes the logical structure and functions of digital systems that are varying from simple gates to complex PLDs PLDs means programmable logic devices okay and it facilitates design specification and simulation of the digital systems actually Verilog and VHDL both are to design hardware description language widely used but VHDL attained more popularity due to its capabilities to capture complex designs okay so that's the VHDL now the important features of VHDL are pointed out here first one that is it is used for design entry and simulation of digital circuits also it is an event driven language and it is technology platform independent language and it is portable okay and it allows both concurrent as well as sequential modeling and it gives the user the flexibility to define the data types that are, there are many user defined data types over here and it strongly supports code reusability and code sharing while writing the program we can reuse the codes which are already written and code sharing is also possible also it supports flexible design methodologies that is top down approach and bottom up approach and it is case in Zen situ language and also it allows design verification at three levels that is compilation and simulation synthesis and post synthesis simulation okay so these are the important features of VHDL so next is the basic terminologies used in VHDL so first one that is entity so it is referred to the circuit which is to be modeled that is if we have to model an half adder circuit so half adder is the entity and second one that is the architecture that is all entities to be designed in VHDL have an architecture description and that architecture describes the functionality of entity that is if we are uh, designing an adder circuit using VHDL then it have got an architecture description so architecture describes the functionality of that particular adder circuit okay and next is the configuration so in case of entity with multiple architecture description configuration is used to bind an entity to a particular architecture for simulation okay so configuration bind that particular entity to a particular architecture for further simulation and next is the sub programs that is user defined pieces of code that are written to perform specific functions and that can be stored and reused when needed so that are the sub programs in VHDL and package means it is a collection of commonly used data types and the sub programs so sub programs and data types constitute package and library means it is a collection of all inbuilt defined language constructs like predefined data types functions language features etc okay so these are the basic terminologies used in VHDL entity architecture then configuration sub programs package and library so next is the 
various levels of system abstraction in VHDL. So mainly there are three levels of system abstraction that is behavioral or algorithmic, data flow and structural or physical. So first one that is a behavioral or algorithmic level of system abstraction which is the highest level of abstraction and in this level it describes a system in term of what it does and how it behaves and it specifies the relation between input and output okay and in second level that is a data flow level it describes how a data moves through the system and in structural or physical level of abstraction actually it is the lowest level of abstraction and it describes a system as a collection of gates and components that are interconnected to perform a particular desired function okay so these are the various levels of system abstraction each have got its own features and its of way of describing a particular system now we move on to the design units of VHDL actually VHDL uses five design units for describing a particular circuit and there are entity architecture configuration package declaration and package body and these five units are classified as primary units and secondary units so the primary unit it can exist independently in a design and the entity declaration configuration and package declaration come under primary unit and the secondary unit it is used in addition to primary unit so architecture and package body come under the secondary unit so a true hardware abstraction in a vhdl requires a vhdl entity and a VHDL architecture as follows that is an entity defines an external interface and architecture defines an internal function okay so first one that is entity so entity is specified by an entity declaration and the entity declaration specifies the name of the entity that is being modeled and it lists the set of interface ports also it describes the external view of the circuit that is to be designed in terms of number of ports their direction of data flow etc so here shown the general form of entity that is entity name is so the keywords are written in bold okay next is a port then we give the port name as port name 1, port name 2, etc. Then mode and type. Then the port name, mode and its type. Then the port name, it continues. Okay, mode and type like that. And it's end with the name. Okay, so the keywords are written in bold and uppercase and the rectangular braces is used to indicate the optional code. Okay, so it, this is the general form. So here the name of entity is a user defined identifier and port 9 it is user specified name of external signals for the entity and port can be single signal or list of signals separated by commas provided all have same type and mode. If ports differ in type and mode then they are separated by semicolon. Okay once this type and mode etc familiar to you then it will be easy to understand the general form and after practicing uh, two or three designs then it will be easy to understand okay okay so two terms have to be familiarized that is mode and type so mode means it is one of the reserved words to indicate the signal direction and there are four times that is first one in in unidirectional port indicating that the signal is an input and data can be written to and second one that is out in unidirectional port indicating that the signal is an output of the entity whose value can only be read next one that is a buffer in bidirectional port which indicates that the signal is an output of the entity whose value can be read inside the entity's architecture and the last one that is in now in bidirectional port 
indicating that the signal can be an input or output okay so these are the four different modes okay next it is a type uh, which is a built-in or user defined signal type and different types are first one bit which can have value 0 and 1 then bit vector that is a vector of bit values between 0 and 7 boolean that can have values true or false then integer it can have a range of integer values then real it can have a range of real values and time which is used to indicate time next important design unit is architecture so architecture describes the functional relationship between the input and output signals giving the internal view of the entity okay entity and architecture are the important design units now the architecture body of an entity consists of two parts that is a declarative part and a statement part declarative part includes necessary declarations such as type signal component and sub program declarations and in statement part actual executable part which includes statements describing the functionality of the entity in terms of logical and mathematical expressions okay so these are the two parts within the architecture body declarative part and statement part so the syntax of architecture is as shown below that is architecture then we give the architecture name of then the entity name is then the declarative part of architecture then followed by begin then we write the statements statement one statement two statement three etc then end with the architecture name okay now the architecture name it is a user defined name of the architecture body it can be same as an entity name or different but in case of multiple architectures of an entity all architectures should have unique different names okay so that's about our entity architecture that is important design units okay okay so that's about the introductory lecture of VHDL watch the upcoming videos on VHDL next lecture is on modeling a circuit also subscribe our channel nyana learning for more videos on electronics and communication thank you thank you so much